Republican Representative Thomas Massey, who has voted against funding Israel 15 times, joined Tucker Carlson over the weekend. The two discussed the American Israel Public Affairs Committee, otherwise known as APAC. Let's watch. Well, I have Republicans who come to me on the floor and say, I wish I could vote with you today. Yours is the right vote, but I would just take too much flack back home. And I have Republicans who come to me and say, that's wrong what APAC is doing to you. Let me talk to my APAC person. By the way, everybody but me has an APAC person. What like, does that mean, an APAC person? It's like your babysitter, your APAC babysitter, who uh, is always talking to you for APAC. They're probably a constituent in your district, but they are you know, firmly embedded in APAC. And Every member has something like this? Every I don't know how it works on the Democrat side, uh, but that's how it works on the Republican side. But it's not like APAC is doing this for all countries. Let's listen. It's the only country that does this, that has somebody that like uniformly, I guarantee there's some spreadsheet at APAC where, <laughs> where, you know, the, the APAC dude is who's matched up with the congressman is there. And then all the congressman's votes on the issue. Oh, has the congressman been to Israel? They, they pay for trips for congressmen and their spouses to go to Israel. I may be, I mean, I don't, I, I'm not the only Republican who hasn't taken the APAC trip to Israel, but I'm probably one of a dozen that hasn't taken that trip. And the other ones just haven't got around to it. APAC responded on Twitter, writing, quote, once again, Massey lies and tropes about APAC. We are a United States organization of 4.5 million American members funded only by Americans. Massey's disdain for Israel and for fellow Americans will not deter us from working to strengthen our country's ties with Israel. During the interview, Massey also revealed what former President Trump said to him after Massey opposed the coronavirus relief package in 2020. Listen. He comes on and he goes, I'm coming at you like you've never seen. <laughs> never in your life before. Have you seen the way in which I will come at you? I'm more popular than you in Kentucky and you know it. I'm back in your primary opponent and you're gonna lose. <laughs> and, come on. and I'm like, oh crap, I probably will lose. Massey added that Trump and him have since patched things up and have a better relationship. Well, I must begin by saying that Thomas Massey has a pretty good Donald Trump impression. That was um, very good. I do a half-hearted Trump impression sometimes on the show. It's half-hearted on purpose because it's not very good. That was quality. Um, so let's start with the, uh, the APAC stuff. Obviously, APAC had targeted Massey, had run ads in his district, had spent money um, to publicize his opposition to funding for Israel. Um, Massey won his, uh, his primary challenge um, easily, handily. I actually think his opposition to foreign military spending, and it's not, it's not just for Israel, it's across the board, it's for Ukraine, it's for everyone, he thinks American tax dollars should be not spent at all or spent at home, uh, is a popular position among Republican uh, primary uh, voters and why he, he is an extremely popular figure in his district in Kentucky. Um, yes, so is Trump, but the, the not, you know, he, Massey representing the non-interventionist right, that is a, a position that too few Republican congressmen have embraced, even though it is actually popular among Republicans. Yeah, I think it's interesting to have APAC say, you know, we represent 4.5 million people who are Americans. When you look at the polling of how people feel about the U.S. support of Israel at this point in time, when they've committed many human rights violations since mm -hmm. October 7th, uh, that's way more Americans. That's tens of millions of Americans that don't approve of what Israel is doing right now. And you have Congress people in lockstep willing to do what APAC tells them to do. Why? It's not because they have very many constituents that are in support of the United States giving Israel endless right. funding. It's, it's really about, I'm going to continue to get donations from APAC. And it's almost at the point where there are members of Congress who aren't getting very much money from APAC, but they're threatened by the reality that if they are not in lockstep with other members of Congress on Israel, then they'll have all of these attack ads put out against them. We saw this happen right. to Senator Nina Turner in Ohio. It really crushed her race to have them pour so much money into her opponent in a Democratic primary simply because she was critical of Israel. Yeah. And similarly, um, 
uh, Massey opposed uh, the coronavirus funding. You know, he's a he has a limited government conservative, a little bit of, of my ideology, libertarianism, um, does not want to spend um, uh, on, you know, massive uh, public wor works programs or bailouts or for or defense or anything um, wants to lower the amount of government involvement in our lives and other people's lives. So that's like that's his consistent view. And you see, um, you know, Republicans like Donald Trump, who who will, will so often say, "Oh, the debt is out of control. We got to get spending under control." And then when they get into office, and you know, Bush was the uh, biggest offender of this ever. You know, talking about limited government conservatism, then runs up the debt, does all the bailouts, spends you know like a drunken sailor on defense, starts new wars in uh, in uh, Afghanistan and in Iraq, a country that hadn't even attacked us. Um, Democrats spend a lot too, but they don't, you know, they don't, <laughs> they don't ever promise to spend less. So they're just doing, you know, exactly what they, they promise to do. But Republicans run on controlling spending, then never actually do it. Um, I was seeing, uh, you know, a lot of uh, people on the right arguing, you know, Massey versus Trump. And uh, even people, I, I think, I, I know on the right who do like Trump, they really like Massey because he's so consistent on this issue. And uh, it, it, I think it goes to show where, a, where Trump turning on you is often a death sentence for Republicans. Like, you cannot have Trump go against you. It, it, Trump is pretty beloved in the Republican Party. Uh, but it did not affect Massey whatsoever because he is so consistent on this issue. And, uh, and he, he speaks to conservative grassroots opposition to so much of what is going on under the leadership of our country, even under Republican administrations. It's interesting to see the additional factions beyond center right and center left. Yeah. Uh, good old factioned American politics, right? Oh you have this God. guy, Thomas Massey, and he is very critical of big government. Great. Be critical of big government. The government oversteps, shouldn't have too much power, great. Shouldn't even exist. You should also carry mm. over this criticism to corporations that wield so much power mm. that it, it equates to authoritarianism. Well, when they control so much of the price setting in our country, mm. when they're pouring money into our politics so that they can have people, not Thomas Massey, but others, you know, vote for them on Israel. Similarly, defense contractors do this. They're in lockstep as well because they want the money going to these companies so they produce the weapons, sell them at higher than market rate, higher than they're sold to other countries, uh, so they can line their pockets and mm -hmm. get very rich. That's too much power for corporations to have. There has to be some check to that power in a democratic way because if we're mad about an authoritarian government, we should be mad when a corporation wields that same power, but just in the private sector. It's just under a different name. And there was this viral post on Twitter that I, I don't know if you'll like, but Adam McKay, the director of The Big oh, Short, I, wrote I am not going to like it. That Go ahead. Mussolini created the word fascism and defined it as the merging of the state and the corporation. And he said a more accurate word would be corporatism. And this was the definition in Webster's up until 196, or 1987, when a corporation bought Webster's dictionary and changed it to exclude any mention of corporations. So I think if you're scared of authoritarian power, you should be critical of corporations well, I'm, as well. I'm totally scared of corporations merging with government and having gr even greater authoritarianism, or you're spending money to lobby government that does things to their benefit. I know that's happening, and I, I'm totally against it. But if there was no, I, I would argue that if the government had less money to dole out, could had the power to destroy or you know could help an entire industry or destroy an entire industry or help specific firms if we if the government's impact on the market was smaller then the the participants in the market would just have to compete with each other said they get around competing with each other because they lobby the government to hurt you help you etc so i agree with you that corporatism is very very bad and i'm totally against it but we have different ideas about how to you want to tackle it on the corporate end and i want to tackle it on the uh, the the government end and i think we'll be arguing about this a lot more For to come <laughs> more rising right after this <laughs>